now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess in paperback and e-readers today. A couple of weeks ago, I gave a very positive review to the CW television show Riverdale. And, unfortunately, I am not going to be watching this show anymore. And my main reason for not watching this show anymore was the third episode of the first season featuring Chuck Clayton. This episode featuring Chuck Clayton was one of the most racist things I have ever seen in the last 25 years of watching television and one of the most disgusting things I have seen in all of my life ever presented on television. Now, in this adaptation of Chuck Clayton, the producers at Berlanti Productions decided they wanted to go off the script and turn Chuck Clayton into a stereotypical black brute. And in that episode, we have Chuck Clayton bragging about giving white girls sticky maples and saying that he had sex with them when he didn't. And only a writer and a producer who was either brain dead or mentally retarded regarding race relations in America would think writing an episode featuring a black man lying about giving white girls sticky maples would be a good thing to present on screen, especially during these tense racial times after the police shootings of Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, the choking death of Eric Garner, and the shooting deaths of men like Walter Scott and, and, and many others. And with all this racial polarization by politicians like President Donald Trump, only a retard would sit there and think that this is a good idea to present the whole idea of a black male talking about how, lying on his penis, talking about how he gives white girls sticky maples, would be a good idea to present on television. And what makes this episode truly racist and disgusting to me is how completely clueless these writers are regarding the black family and the black community. No matter how diverse these producers want to make their version of Rosendale appear to be on the surface, it's clear to me that these writers and these producers at Berlanti Productions have no understanding of black culture, black history, or the black community. Now, I don't care less about your black pop tape, your black Mr. Weatherby, or your black Josie and the Pussycats. At least show the black community some respect by showing that you understand the black history and black culture in America and the issue of racism in America. Because the way Chuck Clayton was presented showed me how little these people understood racism and race relations in America or how black men and white women and their interactions often led to very tragic circumstances for black men. Now you have this Chuck Clayton sitting here lying on his penis talking about how he's gave all these white girls sticky maples and there's not going to be any repercussions from white men. Anyone who has read a history book would understand that any black man who grew up and during the time that Coach Clayton would have grown up would have experienced some sort of racism in his life. And because he would have experienced some sort of racism in his life, he would have sat down and talked to his son about racism in America. And he also would have talked to him about watching his interactions with white women because these are the interactions that could pretty much put his life at risk. So I'm sitting here saying to myself, here you have a black father who's supposed to be close to his son, and he's not going to tell his son, you know, son, you got to watch yourself with these white women out here because this can get you killed. And then he would show him an example of this with Emmett Till. Now, Emmett Till was a 14-year-old boy who a white woman lied and said that he whistled at her. And because he did this during the Jim Crow South, it led to him being taken from his home, tortured, castrated, shot in the head, and then his body was thrown in the Tallahatchie River. And you're going to tell me that this Chuck Clayton was never taught about this, nor was he taught about the numerous black men throughout history who were lynched, murdered, and even worse, done because some white woman said that this black man offended them or this black man scared them. 
And when I look at this whole thing about Chuck Clayton giving sticky maples to white women, and a whole group of white women are just going to sit there and take this, again, that shows me how clueless these writers are regarding relations between black men and white women in America. All this guy, Chuck Clayton, had to do in real life was make one accusation, and that would have been his that would have been his butt if had he done that. Because when it comes down to black men and white women, white men show no mercy when it comes down to these situations. I mean, I can even look at the recent situation featuring one of these college football players, which was caught on tape. This white female was antagonizing this football player. He went into this restaurant. This white female antagonized him. She slapped him. He hit him back. And what happened was his scholarship was put in jeopardy. His chance at the NFL was put in jeopardy. And you're going to tell me that Chuck Clayton on Riverdale is going to go out here and talk about giving sticky maples to white women. And there's not going to be any consequences to that at all. Again, showing me how completely clueless and how completely stupid these white writers are on this CW show. This black man is going to sit there and talk about all these things he did to white women online, and there's not going to be a single consequence or repercussion to it when there have been consequences and repercussions for black men making statements or even looking at white women for over a century, and they're just going to sit there and act like, oh, none of that ever happened. Just deny it ever happened. And just say that, oh, this Chuck Clayton is just going to just gonna say all this stuff about white women. There's this whole group of white women who are just going to sit there and let that pass. When I know from a historical context what has happened to black men, even before Emmett Till, where these black men were lynched, where these black men were murdered, where black men just disappeared and were never heard from or seen from again. All because this white woman said that this black man did something to them. But Chuck Clayton's going to sit here and give, and talk about giving women sticky maples online, talk about having sex with white women, and nothing's going to happen to him. That That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And the fact that, say, that his father would not sit here and talk to this boy about his history, about his culture, and tell him, you know, you have to watch yourself out here. Because you're, when we look at this show, it's like you're trying to say that there is no racism, when clearly there would be racism going on. And when I think about this whole Chuck Clayton character and the way he was mishandled, it just it just boggles my mind because why would any black man understanding the history of America be stupid enough to put his own life at risk by lying about having sex with white women and giving them sticky naples, knowing that this could agitate the people in the community? I'm waiting for somebody at Berlanti Productions to answer that question for me. If any black man out here who knows his history, knows his culture, why would any black man be stupid enough to go put up stuff like that online, trying to act, then knowing what the consequences of it would be? When I look at that whole Chuck Clayton episode, it, it's just one of the most disgusting things I have ever seen in my life. Not only did they take the Chuck Clayton character and take him out of his character that was in the comics, the friendly artist who was always a part of the Archie Comics universe, and a friend... But it was clear to me that people at Berlanti Productions and even some people that maybe at Archie Comics were out to push an agenda regarding black men. And it looked like to me throughout that whole episode, somebody was out to take a jab at Bill Cosby and those alleged assaults of all those white women that happened 50 years ago. And they were using Chuck Clayton as a cipher to vent their frustrations regarding that whole Bill Cosby situation. And to me, that's another reason why I don't want to watch this show anymore, because for you to take this comic book character and use him as a cipher for your personal feelings regarding some celebrity, that's the height of unprofessionalism for me. That's just, you know, completely out of line. That's not something I would do as a professional writer if I were assigned a project. I understand that as a professional, Yes, I may have my feelings on certain issues, but it is not my place to take a character that I'm supposed to adapt and then turn them into a cipher to express my feelings about a certain political issue or a certain social issue. My job as a writer is to adapt the story and stay true to that source material. And the producers of Riverdale and the writers of Riverdale have shown me they can't be professional in doing their jobs. And this is one of the reasons why I'm walking away from this show 
after three episodes because what I saw on screen in that third episode was extremely offensive to me and when I began to really think about it from a historical context it thoroughly disgusted me. Here you have an opportunity to take the one black character who was created to be a black character and instead of staying true to him and his spirit the way you stay true to Archie, Jughead, Betty, Veronica, Kevin Keller and many others you decided you were going to use him as a soapbox to present and breathe new life into old stereotypes. Presenting Chuck Clayton not as the friendly artist he is in the comics, but as a black brute and a way to sit, make a statement about black men. Now that you've made your statement about black men, you can now consider this black man to find something else to do on his Thursday nights at 9 rather than watch this garbage now, because that's what this show to me is now. It's complete garbage. For you to take this black man, this black character, and make him into a black group to push an agenda, that, 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 that just really offends me, and it thoroughly disgusts me, because that, that, that didn't need to be done with this Chuck Clayton character. And it showed me how completely clueless and out of touch these writers are regarding black history and black culture, because... For any black man to sit here and talk about he's going to lie on his penis, talking about he's going to have sex with black white women, that to me, you know, again, that's a writer who's living in a bubble who doesn't understand black history because anybody who understands black history understands that a black man has to be careful when he's navigating the world with white women because that's the world that can cost him his life. That type of lie that Chuck Clayton told on that show that type of lie got Emmett Till tortured, castrated, murdered, and then tossed in the Tallahatchie River. That lie got many black men lynched during the Jim Crow period. It got towns like Rosewood and Black Wall Street burned down. That type of lie got many black men imprisoned for life sentences for crimes they didn't commit. And you're going to have Chuck Clayton sit there and tell this lie... And he's not understanding the consequences, the repercussions, or the historical repercussions of that lie at all. And the reason why he doesn't understand those historical repercussions or those consequences is because Riverdale's writers did, did not do their research, did not study the history, and do not understand the issue of race in America. They talk about diversity with their black pop tape, their black Mr. Weatherby, they're black Josie and the Pussycats, they're black mayor, but they don't understand the racism behind these interracial relationships. And the double standard is clearly a part of the CW's, even on the, on the CW's own other Berlanti shows, such as The Flash, um, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl, where these white men, like Steel, can have relationships with a vixen, and, and Barry Allen can have a relationship with a black Iris West, but on Supergirl, the black James Olsen is put into the friend zone by the white female Kara. And on many of these other shows, like this Riverdale, the black characters can't have a relationship with the white woman. And they're going to sit there, and then when they put this black man on the show, Chuck Clayton, you put him on there, and you make him into a brute. Again, showing me how racist this show is, and showing me why we need, as black people, need to appreciate Netflix shows like Luke Cage, and we need to appreciate content created by black people like myself, because it's clear to me that these white writers and these white producers do not have our best interests at heart when it's time to produce content featuring African American characters inside of a comic book adaptation, because when they do it, we get racism like we saw featured in this Chuck Clayton episode. When we do it, when we produce content like the black production company that produced Luke Cage, that's the only way we're going to get balanced and humanized images of black people. But from here on in, I'm not watching any more Riverdale, and I may even stop watching many of these other CW shows because I'm thoroughly disgusted with the way black men have been depicted on these programs and the way black women have been presented as sex objects just for white men. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.